Test, test, test one, test. Thank you, God, that you woke us up. Thank you, God, that you started us on our way. Thank you, God, that we, Lord God, you counted it not robbery to just look down on us right now with your face of favor so that we might be blessed on this precious day. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. Hallelujah. Together. Amen. Let us exalt his name together because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. We say good morning to you and we bless God for his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his peace, his power, his protection, how he kept us all night long. How many folks are excited that the Lord kept you all night long? And if he kept you all night long, then, then you ought to be excited about the fact that God had purpose for your getting up this morning. Yeah, the devil's mad that you got up, but God, hallelujah, is glorified that you got up this morning. That he is, he, he is the redeemer. He is the deliverer. He is the way maker, hallelujah. And you are the testifier of those things, hallelujah. And we bless his mighty name. Amen. We say good morning to you uh, from Haskell Heights First Baptist Church. Otherwise, we uh, nickname ourselves The Height, and we thank God for this opportunity just to celebrate his name once again. Amen. We take ourselves back. Each week, we, we go back to this very place where the ancient uh, Israelites would, would worship in their portable system called the tabernacle. And then it gave way to the temple, hallelujah, but that gave way to the church. And we thank God today, amen, that we enter his gates with thanksgiving. How many folks have something to be thankful for today? How many folks can tell the Lord, thank you, Lord, when I come into your presence, I am grateful, God. I'm grateful that I got up this morning. I'm not just going to come into your presence and beg you for new things, God, but I'm going to thank you for what you've already done in my life hallelujah we enter his gates with thanksgiving we enter his courts with praise is there praise on your lips right now today is there praise in your hands today is there praise in your feet is there praise in your heart is there praise in your vessel today that you would tell god thank you god for who you are and for what you've done hallelujah and we're thankful unto him and we bless his name but we are making our way into the holy of holies because we need to hear from our god on today we've come so that the lord might 
impart to us a word of encouragement, a word of inspiration, a word that will help motivate us to great things, a word that will keep us, a word that will heal us. How many folk know that there's healing in a word? A word that will deliver us and set us free to do what God has positioned for us to do. And so we've come to hear a word from our master. And when we've come to hear a word with that, we won't leave the same way as when we came. We bless God and we honor him today. This is Communion Sunday, and we thank God for the opportunity just to, to commune with him on this day, amen. And so if you have not prepared your elements, we're asking that you would go ahead and get your elements prepared. If you're listening to us by way of broadcast, by way of virtual means, we're asking that you would get your wine and, and your, your juice. Let me say it that way, amen. Some, some people running for the wine, amen. But go run for the juice and, and go get your cracker or your bread or whatever it is that you're going to use that you're going to represent the Lord's glory with on today, amen. And, and we're going to, to serve him in the beauty of holiness. We're going to serve him in communion today, amen. Amen. We bless God and we honor him and thank him for who he is. Amen. We want to pause and take an opportunity just to say happy birthday to someone who's celebrating birthday on today. If today is your birthday, then we say happy birthday to you. And we thank God that he saw fit to bring you here into the earth realm and to, uh, and to delight in, in bringing you here to the earth to do the work that has uniquely been assigned to your hands. So we say happy birthday, amen. And, and we also say happy anniversary to those who are celebrating an anniversary on today. That if today is your anniversary, we thank God for you and, and thank God for your perseverance and ask that the Lord would bless you with many, many more years to do the work that he's assigned to your hands, amen. Hallelujah. Why don't we just take a moment right now and just, just look up to heaven and just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we bless you. God, we praise you. God, we honor you. God, we glorify you. We adore you. We magnify you, Lord God. We exalt you. For you are no, there is none like you in all the earth, none in all the heavens, Lord God, that you are holy. You are majestic. You are worthy to be praised. And we say to you this morning, hallelujah, hallelujah, for we bless you. We bless you and we honor you and praise your mighty name. Amen. We want to uh, just encourage you on today um, that, that there are um, the, the CDC is, is now handing out um, kits. The CDC is now handing out kits for us to do at-home testing for, uh, for the coronavirus. And so um, we're going to ask that you would uh, just make your way to, the, uh, to DHEC. If you, can, if you can make your way to DHEC, amen, downtown, you can request uh, a few of those kits that you can have at home. And those tests are now proving to be very reliable uh, rather than waiting in long, long, long lines that you can get yourself tested by way of that. We also are uh, one of our sister ministries, amen, um, uh, it, uh, at uh, Ridgewood Missionary Baptist Church on the, on the 12th of this month from 9 to 1. That's going to be on Sunday from 9 to 1. We'll also um, be offering vaccination, amen. And there are uh, several boosters that are available right now for us to already get. It's my understanding that, uh, that, that now Prisma Health is offering the booster shot and CVS's and your Walgreens. You can go to your local CVS and Walgreens and, and you can get your boosters now for all of the, the different vaccines that have already been made. And so we're just telling you this because we want you to be safe in your endeavors, be safe in your travels and just get the most up-to-date information on what's going on. Our numbers were quite high, but how many folk know that we're going to pray that the Lord would do his work here in South Carolina? Amen. And that, that, that there would be a spirit of obedience. Can I get somebody to agree with me right now? That there would be a spirit of obedience that would come upon the people of this, 
of, of this land right now. We'll start right here in our own jurisdiction. And we'll ask that the Lord would, the Spirit would visit South Carolina and that there would be a spirit of obedience, amen, to safeguard those whom you love, uh, to safeguard those whom uh, are, are more vulnerable than some. And so, so we want to make sure that we are vaccinated, that we are wearing our masks, that we are, uh, that we are social distancing, safe distancing, not doing that which we don't necessarily need to do, but, but we want to make sure that, that folks are safe. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we're calling that you would pray with me in agreement that there would be a spirit of obedience to follow the will of the Lord so that we can put this coronavirus to rest, to flight, amen, and to get it out of our presence and go on with the business of our worship, amen, amen. Uh, I do have uh, Deacon Aaron Wilson is going to be coming before us to give us a couple of announcements. I do have one other announcement that I want to uh, reiterate on today. I'm certain that uh, Sister Sharon will, will reiterate as well when she comes. But we're going to have a choir workshop and training, and that will be a here in the sanctuary. We will spread out social distance. No one will be in anyone's proximity so that we can have uh, safe training. Amen. That'll be Friday night. Um, next Friday night, Friday night, the 10th of September at 7 p.m., and then again on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. We're going to do a choir workshop and training that's going to be open to all those who are currently uh, part of our music ministry, regardless of what choir that you sing on, and, and those who have aspiration to perform vocally, amen, to, to minister uh, vocally. And we're going to ask that you would uh, just mark your calendars with those dates. We're going to be holding, hosting a workshop, amen, and training. And, um, and after that, I'm going to uh, ask that you would just receive our chairman, our, our deacon chairman, uh, deacon Aaron Wilson. He'll come before you with a couple of announcements. And then we will receive our Levitical Assembly, amen, for worship, amen. How many folks are prepared for worship? How many folks are prepared for worship? Hallelujah. Let us prepare ourselves to worship. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Certainly this is the day that the Lord has made and we are excited to be here. A couple of events I want to remind you of that's coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. And one of those special our pastor's 15th anniversary here at Pastor Catholic Church. Isn't that exciting, y'all? Amen, amen. God has certainly been good to us, and he has certainly kept our pastor. He kept us with the proper leadership, and we are so thankful. So on next Sunday, September the 12th, we're going to celebrate him. Uh, we're going to have a special guest speaker. Pastor Mazola will be our guest speaker, and we're going to in order to be in compliance with the CDC, we're going to be safe. We're going to continue to distance. In order to celebrate Pastor and share our love, we're going to do a drive-through parade as we'll start here at uh, line up at 1230. And certainly the Spirit, we believe the Spirit is going to work with us and we'll be out in time to get lined up. And we're going to start the parade at 1 o'clock. weeks on September the 26th, we'll have our Women's Day celebration, an annual event, and we're excited about the opportunity to celebrate with our ladies here at House of High First Baptist Church. We will have our guest speaker on that Sunday, our very own, Sister Mary Pond, will be our guest speaker for the Women's Day celebration. Um, the theme for the celebration will be anchoring in Jesus. Jesus. And so we are excited about the fact that we're going to be celebrating women on September the 26th. So two events. Next Sunday, September the 12th, we are celebrating our pastor's 15th anniversary. 
you don't want to miss the event. We'll have a drive through parade afterwards. We actually do take the line up at 1230. And at 1 o'clock, we'll start going through, and uh, we'll be able to express our appreciation for our pastor. Again, September the 12th, and on the 26th, it's our annual Women's Day celebration. Please join us. Mark it on your calendar. God bless you. personally extend my invitation to all members of the music ministries of Haskell Heights First Baptist Church because we are endeavoring to get everybody on one accord, amen, um, so that we can operate in excellence and so that we can learn some new things. If you're an old member, please return. We'll be uh, reintroducing some old things as well as learning new things. So if you're in the Jubilee Choir, the Youth Choir, the Voices of Deliverance, the Young Adult Ensemble, I would love to see you here on Friday night at seven o'clock. And if you so see fit on Saturday, um, it's more intensive. You're actually learning the music at that point. But Saturday is where we're going to talk about um, what it means to be a part of this ministry, um, what that looks like. Um, we're also going to be doing some games so that we can get to know each other better um, and um, just having a lot, some good fun on Friday and Saturday, of course. Um, but wanted to personally extend that to each and every person, whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're virtual, um, and you'll be receiving it via text or email, however, um, as a reminder later on in the week, amen? So if you could just come out with us and worship with us, that would be so wonderful. Um, we're trying to grow this ministry again. We realize that what, what COVID has done and it has introduced some fear into some of us. But we know that God is a healer and we know that he is a rewarder of them diligently seek him. So as you give of yourself in your various ministries, amen, as you give of yourself in your various ministries, amen, he will cover you and protect you because you're giving of yourself to him, okay? So, um, hallelujah, amen. Um, it's worship now, right? I'm sorry. Get out of announcement mode. Um, so good morning. It's so wonderful to see your lovely faces. Um, this is a day that the Lord has made, um, and we will rejoice and be glad. And I had the pleasure of going to a conference, um, well, being a part of the entertainment for um, Holy Assembly for the Nazarene Church in West Columbia. Um, and they had a lot of ministers come through for the last four days. It was interesting because sometimes, you know, when you're asked to do things regardless of um, what capacity you're in, sometimes you're leery, sometimes you're like, okay, I don't know, this is going to work. But it was really, really good. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me, which is something that relates to what Pastor is talking about with grace, is that the minister said that God plants a seed in each and every one of us. Every time you receive a word, it's a seed. But we know the parable of the seed. One fell on good ground, some fell on bad ground, some fell in the road where they could grow, but their roots didn't connect, so they didn't have um, any connection to the source, amen? Our source, amen? So what he said, though, is our ground is a heart. So whenever you receive any knowledge, whenever you receive any word or whatever, you have to check your heart. And that's why pastor is endeavoring us to please, please, please extend grace. Amen. Please, please, please extend grace. Because you never know what someone is going through. And you never know what your life will introduce them to. You understand? Um, I have a best friend of mine who has people come in and out of her house all the time because God sends them her way. He sends them her way because she's a good caretaker of their heart and, and shows them daily in her actions how they should be living. 
So what are you showing in your daily actions of how people should be living? Are you guiding them to the source? Or are you just guiding them to you? Um, so also when he said that, he said that it's imperative that we are so connected and we build a relationship with the source. And one way we do that, of course, is by praise and worship. Another way we do that is by reading the word, not something that we don't know. But our worship has to be so intentional that when we open up our mouth, God immediately, oh, she's calling my name. He's calling my name. He's beckoning for me to come on his or her behalf. And not even necessarily if you're praying for yourself, but even when you're praying for somebody else, he hears your heart and hears your need out of your, out of your unselfishness. Amen. So can we just begin to open up our mouth and thank God, not just for ourselves, but for our neighbor. I'm thankful for my neighbor that's right beside me because they woke up with me to come in here and worship God this morning. Come on, come on, come on, don't just clap. God, we worship you for every life in the building, oh God, hallelujah. Oh, for every purpose that's in the building, oh God, hallelujah. We are here, we are vessels for your service, oh God, hallelujah. As pastor says, we bless each and every person in this building, oh God. I put mouth on my neighbor that they are in health, oh God, hallelujah they are abundantly blessed, oh God, hallelujah, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, oh God, hallelujah, I bless you for the people on virtual, hallelujah, as they count and not robbery to tune in every single week, oh God, hallelujah, God, I bless you for my neighbor, hallelujah, I bless you for the musicians, oh God, hallelujah, whatever they're standing in need of, God, you're worthy, God, you're mighty, God, we give you glory, not just for ourselves, oh God, but for the world, for our president, hallelujah, for our vice president, hallelujah, for the nation, oh God, hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we love you, hallelujah. We seek you not just for ourselves because we understand our charge is to the world, hallelujah. We're supposed to bring nations in, hallelujah. God, you're worthy, God, we bless you, come on. Come on, in order to change your circumstance, you have to open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You want the Delta variant to disappear? Open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, your word. You can do anything but fail, oh God. Hallelujah. There is nothing you can't do. Hallelujah. Your, your name is higher than yours. We bless you. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy.
is what I do.
Hallelujah. Let me prove something to you that it doesn't matter what tune it's in it can be a new song or it could be one of the old songs like hallelujah of us don't recognize that we are his temple and the enemy believes so much that if he could just possess the temple that he would receive the worship that God had received from us but the Bible teaches us in principle that there is not room for two spirits that if you would be filled with the Spirit of God, hey, somebody, if you would just ask God, God, fill me with your Spirit. I don't want room for anger. I don't want room for hatred. I don't want room for prejudice. I don't want room for discouragement. I don't want room for, for sickness. I don't want room for nastiness. I don't want room for ugly. I don't want room for evil. Fill me. full of God you can't be full of foolishness at the same time hallelujah and so it's really simple math that if you leave room for the enemy the enemy will come and occupy room but if you fill up that space tell your neighbor fill it up fill it up if you fill up that space you leave no room for the enemy to mess with you. He recognizes a full vessel. He recognizes all the enemy wants to do is to worship God. But if you're busy in, in worship, make you worship him. But if you're in the business of worshiping God, then, then the enemy can't get in between. That's why hallelujah, the highest praise is so powerful. That's why we can't neglect this opportunity to worship him. That's why we can neglect the hour of praise because, because that's when God does his work in your life. It's in the anticipation of blessing that blessing actually manifests in your life. That's why the old Jews used to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Just at the saying of it, I got glad. Just at the saying, I shouted because I know the potential of what happens when we get to the sanctuary, when we get to the presence of the mighty God. Oh, glory. That's where healing happens. That's where deliverance is. That's where that love you've been looking for is. That's where your peace is. I feel empowered in his presence. I 
feel protected in his presence. I feel provided for in his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In his presence is fullness of joy. And that's why we said welcome into this place. I don't mean the house. God doesn't choose to want to live on wooden benches. He didn't even want to live on nice cushioned seats. But he designed a vessel, and that what David said, he designed a vessel that he could live in. He made a compartment just for himself. There's a house on the inside of my house where God lives, where God moves, where I allow him to breathe, I allow him to speak, I allow him, hallelujah, to have his way. And you know what? Stop cussing, fussing, complaining. I don't know of any more. Because if praise is who you are, praise is what you'll do. Hallelujah. In the name of God. I want you all to turn with me. Um, I know we have our communion on today. And so I want you to turn with me um, just briefly to the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, and the sixth chapter, the book of Deuteronomy in the sixth chapter. we thank you for this time that we have to just fellowship with you we ask that you would open our hearts and our minds and our understanding that we can understand your word and that we might be made pure that we might be made clean that we Lord God would be turned upside down Lord God and that the old ways of thinking might yield to new ways of thinking that we might be empowered Lord God to think like you and Hallelujah, that our minds would be washed and that our minds would be renewed, that our lives would be elevated from the place where we are today. Hallelujah, that we have a revelation for healing in the midst of sickness, that we have a revelation right now, Lord God, for deliverance in the midst of bondage, that we have a revelation of your power in the midst of our weakness, and that we might be overcomers, Lord God, in everything, in every area, not defeated, but delivered to victory. And we bless you for this time we spend together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And in the sixth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, I'm going to read starting at verse 1, and it reads like this. It says, now this is the commandment. And these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord with your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and 
they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So shall it be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you in you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of all good things which you did not fill, hone out wells which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, verse 12 says, then beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, amen, the delivering of his word. Amen. And I want to talk to you just briefly about something that um, the Lord would have us up to observe here. And we're still ministering on that topic of grace, but we want, there are certain things that we have to um, make certain that we um, have in our bosom, things that we need to understand implicitly, things that we need to, to, to know beyond a shadow of a doubt about our word, about our God, so that, so that his word comes alive and is powerful in our life and in experience. And chapter 6 in Deuteronomy is one of those pivotal point um, in, in Scripture that helps us to understand some things, some, some very necessary things that, that we would need to know as children of God to be able to prosper in the way that God has ordained for us to prosper. And, and when we look at, we look at this, this chapter uh, 6 in Deuteronomy, um, our study has, has held us, helped us to understand that that Moses was about 120 years old when he delivered this particular message and the circumstance of which the book of Deuteronomy, which is a very special book to us, is that Moses in his old age had one last attempt. This was his farewell, uh, his, his group of farewell speeches and his group of farewell communications to the, the tribe of Israel. If you remembered that this was the same Moses that God had commissioned to go up on the mountain and to meet with him on the top of the mountain where the people of God who had been recently delivered from Egypt had come to Mount Sinai and when Moses went up they stayed down but Moses met with God and Moses was given the tablets he was given those those commandments that God had had written with his own finger amen and that that God was giving him something that, that would be necessary for them to survive in the very climate in which they were getting ready to go. And that really just teaches us so many profound things that when the Lord is ready to bless you, when the Lord is ready to bless you, that the Lord will put, hallelujah, some standard around that blessing, that the Lord's blessing isn't just kind of, isn't kind of willy-nilly, it's not just free and, and unbounded, but it is, it, it's very carefully prepared that the Lord has gone to great lengths to make certain that his people would be blessed. And, and the fact of the matter is that God had chosen this group of people to represent him, to show that his blessing would abound in their lives. And, and I get excited, church, because when, when I understand this very thing, that God had chosen a specific group of people and on which he was going to place blessing and lay his hands and demonstrate his power and show his grace and, and shower his grace upon so that others might look in and be able to see his trophies of grace and be able to say, who is the God that they serve? It's all about getting people saved. It's all about God wanting, um, the desiring that folks would be saved and that the initial condition that God had set up in the Garden of Eden would come back to prevail on earth. When he created the earth and the heavens, he created it to be a place of blessing, a place, a place of prosperity, a place where his people would receive everything that they would stand in need of that he pray placed us here in a perfect environment. And, and because we weren't satisfied with what perfection God had placed before us, my God. Oh, I could talk there for just a moment. 
that, that we're not satisfied oftentimes with the perfection that God has placed before us because the enemy has a way to make you think that what you're looking at in other venues uh, is actually better than what God has prepared for you. The grass is always greener on the other side of the road. That there, there's always this, temp, this temptation to want to enjoy something that God did not prepare for you, something that God did not ordain for you, as opposed to enjoying what God had, had already placed for you. We want more than God has granted for us. And then henceforth never get to enjoy what God has ordained for us. And, and, and so this is a very profound moment in the life of the Israelites because I want to tell you something that, that those who were at the foot of Sinai, those who were at the mountain when Moses went back up on the hill to get the commandments for God that was supposed to represent how he was going to, how, how he was going to uh, govern his, his land. You see, we've got governors and we've got lieutenant governors and we've got mayors and we've got all kinds of city officials and local officials and we've got we've got politicians at every level that try to legislate how it is that we're supposed to live so that there is a system whereby we can prosper but but how many folk know that the earthly system is corrupt but God's system is pure God's system was placed and God's system was in place for just this, for, for just this moment, amen, so that we would, be able, we would be able to understand how God wants to bless us. And Moses was at a moment in his life, and you know how it is when you're at the last moments of your life that you say that I've got to get this message across. This might be the last time. Hallelujah. They used to sing an old song in the, in the old church that said, this may be the last time, this may be the last time, this may be the last time, maybe the last time, I don't know. And, and, and when they sang that song, they were, they were saying that, you know what, there's an urgency in my voice. There is an urgency that you get what I'm trying to tell you because I may not have this chance anymore. I may not have this opportunity to tell you. And, and Moses was filled with some wisdom. Y'all just bear with me for just a moment. Moses was filled with wisdom. He, was, he had the wisdom to know that God, went after he, he met with God up there, God had already gave, gave him the understanding that when you get back down on the, on the foot of the mountain, you're going to find that the people weren't patient. Come on, somebody. You're going to find out that the people were down there trying to make their own gods instead of waiting on me and waiting on God to give them their full provision. And God said, it was me that brought them out of the land of Egypt. It was me that, that spoke to the winds and told the winds to blow in such a way that it parted the waters left and right and left dry land for them to walk through from the, from the land of bondage all the way into the land of freedom. It was me that moved the Red Sea out of their way. It was me that ran rain manna down on them so that they could eat supernatural food from heaven. It was me who knows the nutritional value that the body needs and I put perfection in, in, in manna so that you would be able to live. It wasn't about what you like in this restaurant and that restaurant. Sometimes we're so rebellious with God that we want to eat what we want to eat because we want to do what we want to do and God said that's not how I designed you. I wanted you this way because that's the way I made you and that way is the optimum way to get blessing to you my lord y'all hear me that a lot of times we we like to write our own book and we like to write our own program and we like our own instructions to do things our own way but but Moses was at his last 120 years old pleading to the people saying that listen I need to tell you some things that are very important let's look at that church he said to them he said, these are the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you that you may observe them in the land which you are getting ready to cross over to possess. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to get excited about the fact that God has said to Moses, this is a prophetic moment for them, and it's a prophetic moment for us as we even examine the scripture, that there is a place where God says that you're on the verge of your breakthrough. 
You're on the verge of t I'm on the verge of taking you into the place that you've been yearning for. I know it's been many years, and I know it's been a long preparation. I know it's been a long time and a long journey. I know you might have gotten discouraged, and many the, the truth of the matter is that many folks get so discouraged in the midst of the travel. Mo most folk get so discouraged in the midst of the journey because the wilderness overwhelmed them and overtook them that they give up in the process. Those foot folks on the foot of the mountain said that Moses is up there too long. God has taken too long to do what God has promised us to do. But how many folks would agree with me today that if God promised you, hallelujah, that you just got to learn how to wait on him, that the, the songwriters say it late in the midnight hour. Y'all don't hear what I'm trying to say, that the songwriter was trying to help us to understand that there's just something, a quality about what God's instruction is before us that oftentimes it's late in the mid, not just in the midnight hour, but late in the midnight hour. You know, because the midnight hour lasts one hour and it's the 59th second of the, uh, y'all don't hear what I'm trying to tell you. It's at the very last moment sometimes when God shows up and we give up at the 11th hour trying to write our own story and do our own thing so that God, hallelujah, doesn't get the credit and all the glory. We got to learn to wait on him and be of good courage. And the Lord says, if you have this inclination about you to wait, then he said, I will strengthen your heart. How many folks need a stronger heart today? That God, I've been waiting on you. God, I've been waiting, but, but strengthen my heart so that I can wait. I don't want to give up prematurely. I don't want to walk out on my blessing. I know it looks tough. That's the way wilderness is always designed to look tough. You see, the fact of the matter is that Moses had this understanding about him. He had wisdom to understand that God had brought mankind from Eden where everything was in perfection. But by Genesis 3, they gave up perfection simply because they couldn't wait on him. Hallelujah. That, that God had put them in a, in a good land and, and, and God, because he was ready to bless them, sometimes when God is ready to bless you, I know this is going to bless somebody right now, when God is ready to bless you, sometimes things go topsy-turvy. And it can happen for a long while. Hallelujah. I need you to repackage this thing because if you're under God's supervision and supervisory care, then you, you need to understand that God has not shut his eye toward your situation. Cry out. And, and trust God for your provision that God has not forsaken you and God will never leave you just like he promised that that oftentimes when we when, when we try to get to a promised land we've got to go through a wilderness before we get there y'all don't hear me right now a lot of people want to get to the want the promise but they don't like going through the wilderness but the wilderness prepares you to enjoy the promise y'all don't hear me in here that, that if, we, if, we, if we gave up on the wilderness journey, if we, if we circumvented the wilderness, that we would, we would somehow throw out the promise, it wouldn't look so good. Amen, somebody. Can I talk to you for real? That, that the devil has a way of making certain things look so good uh, on the other side of the road that we would give up what God has prescribed for us, saying that I don't think I like the way that looks. Y'all ever see that? I, can I tell y'all something real quick? Let me just confess, I, you know, because y'all know I like sweet potatoes, right? I, I like sweet potatoes, but, but sweet potatoes don't mean nothing when you got a sweet potato pie in front of you. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Now, God didn't make the sweet potato pie, but he did make the sweet potatoes. And when he made the sweet potatoes, he didn't put a whole two cups of sugar and, and two sticks of butter and four eggs and crust. And y'all don't hear what I'm talking about right up in here right now. Did he even put all that stuff in there so that when you eat a whole sweet potato pie, because if you eat a whole potato pie, and it's not but the equivalent of two potatoes, two potatoes will do your body justice, but, two, but a whole pie will mess you up. We like, the way the, we like things the way that we like them instead of the way that God made them. Y'all don't hear me in here. We like to do stuff the way God, the way we like to do them instead of the way God said to do them. Come on.
Moses was trying to tell the people that you got a mind of your own. In fact, I know what I'm talking about because it's your forefathers. It's your mothers and your fathers in that previous generation that was down at the foot of Sinai and they could not make it into the, into the land of promise simply because they wanted things their own way. And, and, and I learned from this book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 that God will, he will tarry with you, but there does come an end of the road. For all you folks that hate the fact that grace is, is sufficient where God is concerned, God says this, that you know, a lot of folks don't like grace because it always looks like you're forgiving people for doing wrong. But, but I want to I assure you that God says that there is a day when the, top, when the time stops ticking. And there is a day that is a call to judgment. The first generation of Israelites never made it into the promised land. If you read your, if you read your testimony, if you read your story, that, that they never made it in. And Moses is talking to their children and grandchildren now. And he said that I'm 120 years old, but God has, has prepared you to go into the kingdom. Your fathers and mothers never made it because they didn't want to do things God's way. But I want you to understand that it says, uh, he said that I want you to observe to do all the commandments that God has commanded you as you are crossing over to possess that which God had prepared for you. Amen. Hallelujah. You're about to take possession. And would you tell your neighbor that for just a moment or just put it in the air if you're in the room by yourself? You're about to take possession. You got to put yourself in the. You got to put yourself in the place of these folks in a prophetic way, so that you can understand what it is that they were going through, so that you might be able to 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 move the way that they move. Hallelujah! You're about to take possession, and and all those days that you've had to struggle, that's just been your wilderness. But I I got news for you. I I, I wonder if there's a testimony different than this. I, it certainly isn't with me. That even though you don't like what you have to go through, God has always been there. God has always provided. God didn't let you, y'all, come on somebody. It may not have been just what you wanted, but God never let you go hungry. It may not have been, you, you, the temperature may not have been right, but God always turned up some heat for you when it got cold, when, when things were, you, you didn't want to suffer in the midnight hour. You didn't really want to go through what you had to go through, but God has testified that, but I never left you in the middle of the, of the mess. I need you to understand that I'm still with you in the wilderness and I need you to keep walking through. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God says fear no evil because I am with you. My rod is there. My staff is there. I'm there to comfort you and I'm telling you that if you walk on through, hallelujah somebody, that God is saying that, that, that if you walk on through that, 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 that I'm going to bring you to the place where I ordained for you to go. So today God wants me to tell you something like this that God allows U-turns tell your neighbor God allows U-turns but he doesn't accept shortcuts oh y'all don't like that God allows U-turns but he doesn't accept shortcuts God was saying to them that you're going the only way to the promised land is through the wilderness and these folks needed to understand that the only way I could get you to the, to the wilderness, there are some things that you need to know. Look at verse 2. It says that, that you may fear the Lord your God and keep all his statutes and commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, your daughter and your granddaughter, all the days of your life. This isn't just about a journey for you, and it's not just about a journey for, for, your, for, for, for your personal, those personally in your house. It's about your generations. About, it's about you looking forward to the next generation is what he said. He said, look at verse 3, therefore, hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. You're on your way to your promised place. 
Verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. In other words, I think the Bible was trying to help us to understand what Moses was trying to help the people to, to get is that you, I want you to love the Lord, but you just can't love him with your lips. Hallelujah. You can't just love him with something like this. Some folks say, I love you, Lord, but you haven't learned to love him with your heart. You haven't loved and learned with to love him with your strength that means your strength is your body that everything the Lord has given you that you ought to give back to him because you love him amen because you are a temple set apart for the Lord's use I don't know about you but it's taken me a lot of years to be able to understand that my feet belong to the Lord that my mind belongs to the Lord that my hands belong to the Lord that my my legs belong to the Lord that my arms belong to the Lord. And so when I move about, it's I'm moving for Jesus. How many folk can testify that I'm moving for Jesus? When I dance, I don't dance like I used to dance in the club because when I dance, I'm dancing for Jesus now. Y'all don't hear what I'm trying to say, that I've come to a revelation that he made this vessel, that he created me for his glory. And if he created me for his glory, then God wants to use every bit of what I do. So whatever I do with my hands, I do it for the glory of God. Whatever I use my mouth for, I say it to the glory of God. I know what y'all thinking right now. Come on, pastor. When do you take a moment for yourself? I don't need a moment for myself because it is in him that I move and breathe and have my being. Amen. It is in him. He's the one that wakes me up in the morning after he has allowed me to sleep all night long. Don't y'all let me get started with that one. Let me just move on. Look what he says here. Give me one more moment where he says here. He said, be careful to, to observe it that it may be well with you. God says, I want it to be well with you. He's telling this generation, this is what God God wants. Don't let the culture tell you something different. Don't let folk steer your mind in a different direction. God wants to bless you. Would you put it in the atmosphere? Would you tell your neighbor? God wants to bless you. That's just the way it is. It may not look like blessing, and every now and again, because you got to walk through a wilderness, it may not feel like blessing, but you've got to keep in the back of the crevices of your mind that where I'm going is on my way way to my promised place and God has ordained to bless me as I get ready and God said I'm not blessing you so that you can just hold on to the blessing I don't like when for hold on to my blessing and nobody else knows about who I am when I bless you I need you to turn around and bless somebody else if I if I do something for you I need you to turn around and do something for somebody else pray for somebody Lift a sister up. Lift a brother up. Encourage somebody in the Lord. But do something that I've done for you because you love what I've done. Hallelujah. He said, I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear this, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And he said, love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, with everything that you've got. And he said, look at this, and these words I command you shall be in your heart. And look at this, please, I would say this, underline it, circle it, you know, do something, lift it off the page, put it in there, but make sure it stands out for you. And, and this, but teach them diligently to your children. Hello, somebody. Teach them diligently to your children. It might be rough, especially in this day and age, because your children don't want to hear what you have to say and what the Lord has to say. But he said, that's where your forefathers messed up. That, that if they had taught, if they had lived a certain way, oh, y'all don't hear me today. If they had lived a certain way, it would be them that I would be crossing over into this promised land with. But it's not them that I'm crossing over. It's you that I'm crossing over with. And if you're under the sound of my voice today, you are that new generation that God is really talking to. That's God is saying that, listen, I'm talking to you, that teach them diligently to your children and your grandchildren and down the way. Tell them about the goodness of God. You know, school isn't what happens at, from 8.30 until 3 o'clock or whatever time, 8 o'clock until 3 o'clock in the big institution school. 
school starts at the house. Hallelujah. You got to learn. You got to give some child some learning at the house before they get to the classroom. That's when they'll know how to treat the teacher with respect because they learn respect at the house. Hallelujah. A lot of folk, they think that respect is taught in school, but if it's not manifest at the house, oh, I might be stepping on somebody's toes right now. That means you're going to have to stop cussing at the house and you're going to have to stop arguing at the house and you're going to have to stop doing what you're going to tell them that they can't do at the house because he said teach these things diligently unto your children. Be diligent about teaching them. In fact, they said that, that I'm so diligent as a Jew with the word of God that I wrap it around my wrist so that when my hands go to do something, I know that the word of God is why I'm picking something up. And it's like a front lid. I put it on my forehead so that when I walk, I'm walking in a way that I'm seeing the word of God. The Jews used to wear something that would put the word right in front of their faces so that they could see in every place that they went so that their footsteps would match with what Jehovah wanted for their lives. And he said, and if you can live for me, I can live through you and I'll bless your land. I'll bless your cattle. I'll bless your maid servants. He said, blessed will you be in the city. Blessed will you be in the field. Blessed will you be in your store, in your basket and your store. You got a basket, but God said when the basket runs out, you can just walk on over to the store and fill your basket back up. I never let you have to strive for the need for anything. That God said, I'm your provider. I'm your protector. I'm the one who will love on you. I'm the one who will give you wisdom in the midnight hour. I'll show up on time. Your enemy won't have an advantage over you because I'm while you're sleeping and your enemy is plotting. I am putting your enemy to flight. Hallelujah. I'm the one you worship. God said that if you can put me back in front, hallelujah, I can do some miracle working in your life. I, I don't need you to try to take a shortcut and serve somebody else. Don't get impatient and don't you get yourself weary with well-doing, but you shall reap a harvest of plenty if you faint not. God said that if you wait on me and be of good courage, I'll strengthen your heart. I'll keep you in the midst of trouble. I'll keep you in the midst of burden. And just remember that you're on your way to your promised place. Don't keep looking at what the wilderness has to offer, but keep your eyes on the prize. Look at the cross of Jesus. He hung there and bled and died on for your pardon, hallelujah, so that all things might be right with you and me. Now I'll feed you in the harvest field. I just need you to keep walking through because there is blessing on the other side. There's blessing down the road and I need you to keep your eyes fixed on the blessing. Hallelujah. He told them one last thing and I'm going to get out your way. He said there's this one thing I want you to remember tribe of Israel. That, 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 that you're going to mess up from time to time. You, he said that, that your forefathers messed up. You're going to mess up from time to time. But I've got good news for you. The God you serve allows U-turns. Sometimes you walk in this way when you really ought to be walking this way. God said, I allow U-turns, but I don't accept shortcuts because shortcuts will take you down the wrong alleys and shortcuts will take you down in the wrong where there's danger waiting a, a, around you. You see, when the children of Israel went to the promised land, God didn't take them the shortest route. He took them around the long way. But he said, around the long way, I've already made provision for you at all of the stops. I want you to think of all the stops in your life where you've had to stop and say, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it across this one. And I don't know how I'm going to make it through this one. God said, I took you around this long way because I had need to teach you that I'm going to be there with you in struggle. How many folks can I get a witness right now? I needed to help you to understand 
That is, that in this world you'll have tribulation, but when you come up upon tribulation, I need you to be of good cheer. Learn how to praise me when you come up on a rough spot. Hallelujah. Can I get some help in here right now? How many folk are in a rough spot in their life right now? Maybe there might be a rough spot in your house. There might be a rough spot in your mind. There might be a rough spot in your body. There might be a rough spot in your family. It might be a rough spot on your job. There might be a rough spot in your life right now, but God God is saying right now that I need you to come up to that rough spot and begin to give God a praise. You begin to tell God that God, it doesn't matter what the rough spot looks like. I recognize this. This is the wilderness. And if I keep on walking through, I'm going to find out that you'll carry me over this rough spot. And when I get over this mountain, there's a valley coming along there where I can just glide on down and God will pick it. God said, I don't mind you turns, but I don't like it when you take shortcuts because shortcuts will end, put an end to your destiny. Shortcuts will put an end to your life. There's a lot of folks that want happiness today. It's a microwave approach to life. that say, I want what I want now. And God said, it's a not yet right now. You got to go through some things before you can appreciate whatever it is that I have for you, before you can use whatever it is that I have for you. Because if, you, you, if I give it to you right now, you might steal it right now, but you'll keep it for yourself. But if I make you work for it, if I make you walk through it, if I show you that I'm there with you in it, then you'll be, you'll, you'll be inclined to tell somebody that let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. And that's what it's all about. Teach them to your children and to your grandchildren. Tell the story of the Lord. Don't let it stop right here at your shortcut, but go on down and say, God, I was traveling along the wrong road, but thank God you allowed me a U-turn. Thank God you made me of a troubled mind brought me back to sound mind have you ever been in trouble in your mind have you ever been out of your mind and out of your situation have you ever been in the wrong place at the wrong time has God given you grace to get up out of strange places to move away from crazy ideology and start thinking brand new. As God said, I picked you up, just keep walking. I remember that old, that old harlot, that woman that was caught in the act of adultery when they was ready to hang her, when they was ready to cast the stones upon her. If God asked the question of all those who were getting ready to cast the stone, they moved away, but he told the woman, he said, get up from your, your place. And I tell you, get up from your dirty place. Get up from where you used to be. Get up from what you used to be. Get up from what you used to do. Get up from how you used to think. Get up from everything that used to be. Hallelujah. He said, go. Tell somebody, go and sin no more. I'm empowering you. I'm leading you. Go according to my life. I got your back. Hallelujah. I'm going to pick you up in, with your fall. I'm your rock in a weary land. I'm your shelter in the time of storm. I'll be your bridge when there's troubled water. I'll be there for you in the midst of madness. I am your deliverer. I am your provider. I am, hallelujah, your way maker. I am the lover of your soul. And we'll get there together. Hallelujah, somebody. Let's give the Lord a praise in this house today. He said, if you want to get there, hey, Yes, sir. God's got a way that you can't go over. <laughs> God's got a way that you can't climb under. You must come in at the door. And he has a way for you. And I want to encourage somebody today that God has not forgotten you. 
you might just be in your wilderness season. And to the Israelites, it was a long season. Yeah, but God, my hair's been getting gray through this season. When are you going to come? Keep walking. Yeah, God, but I just don't see light at the end of the tunnel. Keep moving. Yeah, God, but I just don't feel like it's going to come to an end. Keep striving. I'm with you all the way. And God won't let you down. But he will deliver you. I want you to do this for me as we prepare for communion. I want you to take a moment and thank God for taking me safely through to my promised place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I don't want you to leave out of here and say, yeah, 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 that's what the preacher said. No, that's what the Word said. Because the end of the story is they actually got into the land. Don't take no shortcuts. That means doing things your own way. Because God's way has been already preordained for your success. Let us pray for a soul that just needs. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray right now, Lord God, for those who are reaching out to you even at this moment of prayer, Lord God, saying, God, I don't understand some things, but I'm willing to trust you. We're praying for those right now, Lord God, who don't know who you are, but are willing to take the chance on our testimony. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner, but I want to be saved by your grace. God, and I pray that you, as they reach up to you, that you will catch hold of their hand and pull them up from their place of deficit. Put their feet on a rock to help them to know that you are with us, you're with them. We ask, oh God, that the soul that's desiring salvation, that it would be saved to the uttermost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so if you're out there today and you want to make the Lord your, the Lord your God, the Lord of your life, if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. God promised us that and so if you want to be saved we're asking that you want to reach out to us we'll pray for you you can reach us at our website at www.haskellheightsfbc.com or if you're here in the house today if you just want to come forth and we can minister to you today the love of Jesus Christ but we want to help you in this walk by way of testimony I can tell you God changed my life and because he changed my life, I want you to experience the great change that he's made in my life, in yours. Contact us and we will help walk you, hallelujah, through this incredible journey. Be a part of God's family. And if it's your desire, you can be a part of this family here at Haskell Heights First Baptist Church. But we'll love on you. We'll love you past your hurts. And we'll love you way into your potential in Jesus. Amen. Amen. We want to get ourselves prepared for communion. Amen. This precious moment when we just take to be with the Lord our God. 
and just to remember what he has done for us. For it was on the cross on Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give myself away. Hallelujah. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away. So you can use me, I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away. So you can use me, I give myself away. is not my own mm, to you I belong I give myself I give myself to you life not my own my life is not my own to you I belong I give myself I give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. Jesus was betrayed he took bread he blessed it and he broke it and he said this he said take eat this is my body which was broken for you hallelujah before you eat it would you just say for me hallelujah that means he knows all about you so let us, let us eat of that bread together. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. He said, and I won't drink henceforth of the fruit of this vine until I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. You know what that means? He said, when you drink it today, just remember, I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. How many folks can say that's the best drink I ever had? Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord.
say it with me one more time. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. Wonderful day and worship our King.